Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here and speak about the situation of the Baha'is in Iran. Uh, I would like to speak about uh, two issues today. One of them is the killing of Mr. Atollah Rezbani, and uh, the other is the denial of the access to higher education in Iran for Baha'is. Mr. Atollah Rezbani was a Baha'i uh, in the city of Bandar Abbas in the south of Iran who was shot in the back of his head on Saturday on August 27th. His body was discovered in his car near a ra railway station uh, on the outskirts of Tabana Abbas where he lived with his family and two children. From the information that we have received, it is clear that his assailants had forced him to drive to that location where he was murdered. His killing came as he was threatened numerous times by uh, agents of the Ministry of Infor Intelligence where they had threatened him and forced him to leave his job and uh, had also asked him to leave the city, him, him and his family. Also, the past several years, a cleric in the city that Mr. Rizvani lived uh, had attacked the Baha'i faith in his Friday sermons. And of course, this isn't the first time that there are such attacks on the Baha'is by both clerics and in the media. Uh, Baha'is have always been portrayed as a source of all evil in Iran, and they're accused of being agents of foreign governments, and many other lies are spread against them in the hope that, that the people themselves, the Iranians, will rise against them and attack them. The overall, overall rise against the Baha'is and violence against the Baha'is has increased in the past several years, where since 2005, we have documented 52 cases where Baha'is have been tortured or held in solitary confinement while in detention. We have another 52 incidents where Baha'is were physically assaulted, sometimes at the hands of officials, and then sometimes also by the hands of plain clothes or unidentified attackers. Attacks have also been directed at Baha'i-owned properties, and we've had 49 incidents of arson against Baha'i homes and shops, and more than 30 have been vandalized, such as uh, they've been vandalized with hateful graffiti on the walls. And at least 42 Baha'i cemeteries throughout the country have been desecrated or damaged, which shows that the Iranian government doesn't even have respect for the dead. Hundreds of Baha'i school ch children have faced insults and harassment from teachers and administrators who are really supposed to be the protectors of these children. And hundreds of Baha'i businesses have been closed at the sanctions of local officials. And what really makes these numbers and these attacks distressing is the extent of government involvement in the attacks and also the lack of investigations um, regarding these actions. And, and how these actions are really taking place with total impunity. <coughs> so whether the act attacks have been sanctioned uh, by an order from the intelligence ministry or have come as a result of incitement to hatred in the media, the government has never investigated or prosecuted those who are responsible. And actually, uh, the Baha'i international community ha is not aware of even a single incident of someone being persecuted for the attacks and for the actions that have taken against the Baha'is. In the case of uh, vandalizing Baha'i cemeteries, for example, individuals have used heavy equipment, such as bulldozers, and uh, the uh, permits for which could not be taken unless there's some kind of government involvement in these attacks. The other issue uh, that, I, that I wanted to talk about was access to higher education. Uh, as you know, um, Baha'i students in Iran have been denied the access to attend university in Iran since the Islamic Revolution. And in the beginning of the revolution, Baha'i students were expelled from university and Baha'i professors were taken out of their jobs just because they were Baha'is. In 1991, a secret memorandum was found by a special rapporteur in Iran that established a national policy aimed at the quiet strangulation of the Baha'i community. So whereas in the beginning of the revolution, the aim of destroying the Baha'i community came with killings and torture and persecutions and imprisonments, but with this docu document, uh, it showed that the government had shifted tactics from this open kind of persecution to the kind of um, slow but social, economic, and cultural restrictions 
that they imposed on the Baha'is and which was less likely to bring international attention on the government. And the document uh, dictated that Baha'is should be kept basically illiterate and uneducated and living only at a, a subsistence level and fearful at every moment that even the smallest infraction will bring the threat of imprisonment or even worse. So the memorandum was actually um, drawn up by the Iranian Supreme Revolutionary Cultural Council at the request of Mr. Khamenei, the Supreme Leader of Iran, and with the signature of um, him and also the, the president at the time, who was uh, Mr. Hashemi of Sanjani. And the focus was uh, to treat Baha'is in such a way that their progress and development shall be blocked. And one of the ways to block their progress and development was to deny students access to higher education. And so it was said that as soon as a Baha'i a student is known to be a Baha'i either at the entrance to university or during their studies for them to be expelled immediately for being a Baha'i. So uh, this, this went on for some time and also the way that they would identify Baha'is as, as Baha'is in university was to have um, what was called the Sotuna Mashab or um, a way to identify how, if people are, what religion they have and they had to identify themselves as one of the four religious minorities that are actually recognized in the Constitution. And since Baha'is are not recognized in the Constitution, they would not be able to enter university. Uh, however, in 2004, because of the international pressures on Iran, uh, this, this changed and the form was changed so that Iran uh, claimed that having um, to identify one's religion does not mean that you belong to that religion, but that it is actually just the subject of your studies during your university years. And so the Baha'is accepted this explanation, and many Baha'is applied to go to university, and many of them were actually uh, accepted with very high marks. However, shortly after that, uh, there was another confidential letter sent to 81 universities across Iran and ask them to expel Baha'is, any Baha'is who were known to be Baha'is, either at entrance or during their studies. And also many Baha'is who would register um, at universities, they would uh, get a message of uh, or uh, a wrong file. And so in this way, uh, they have still been denied the access to higher education, even though maybe not um, officially. So, uh, Mr. Rouhani has uh, made many promises in his uh, campaign and even now of equal treatment of all citizens regardless of one's religion or ethnicity or uh, other differences. And we really hope that he follows his promises of treating everybody in Iran as an, as an Iranian with the basic human rights that should belong to every human being and to not only investigate the crime that was committed against uh, Mr. Rezvani, but also give Baha'is the opportunity to live like any other Iranian and to attend universities and to be able to help and improve their country. Thank you.